Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, those of you that have been following the channel for the last couple of weeks uh, have noticed that a YouTube creator aptly named P-Brain has tried to challenge me on perspective in a photograph of Mount Rainier which demonstrates the spherical rotating Earth. I've responded to this twice already and he keeps coming back and he's got yet a third video out now. This is rather frustrating because I really don't think I have anything more to say on the matter. But he did bring some points up and some other um, Flat Earth YouTube creators brought some points up that I thought that I would address. So my idea was is that I would contact a friend of mine to have a look at the videos and maybe give me five minutes worth of video that I could incorporate into a video of mine. Well, that's not the way Critical Think rolls. Critical Think put out a 17-minute video that handled it from soup to nuts. And since I've been highlighting smaller creators the last week or so, I thought I would make this his highlight. I was planning on doing a segment on him, but I think that he does the story the best himself. So let's both of us enjoy Critical Think and Perspective. Hello flatties and globe defenders, it's Critical Think from Down Under. Now some pea-brained individual has had a few swipes at me good mate Bob. He's tried to explain the Mount Rainier shadow and the clouds by using arguments of perspective. And of course the sun setting behind me is also possible with perspective. But you know in the real world where perspective really works differently, this is not possible on a flat earth. And now we'll have a look at some of the pea-brained things that are said. <coughs> It all began when Bob produced this video that showed a shadow cast on the bottom of the clouds by the sun, which is impossible on a flat earth, and the sun must be lower than the clouds for this to happen, and this is indeed true. But then some YouTuber who is appropriately named P-Brain wanted to tell us that it was all possible due to perspective. P-Brain attempted to accuse Bob of all kinds of logical fallacies, but really failed miserably in this endeavour. In his attempts to explain away this obvious globe-supporting evidence, he commits a logical fallacy of his own. His two favourite tactics are to attack the straw man and to use perspective. A straw man is a form of argument and an informal fallacy based on giving the impression of refuting an opponent's argument while actually refuting an argument that was not presented by that opponent. One who engages in this fallacy is said to be attacking a straw man. Well, P-Brain loves his straw men, and I'll show you how easily he does it. Let's start with him claiming that the mountain is poking through the clouds. Well, you know what's going on? The top of the mountain is actually above the clouds. So, and what we see there is a shadow cast from the top of the mountain. You see, it's impossible to cast a shadow on the underside of clouds when the object that's casting the shadow, the top of the mountain, is above those clouds. You can see how he cleverly introduces the straw man of the mountain being above the clouds. It is correct to say that the sun must be above the clouds in that scenario. However, that scenario is not the one that Bob was talking about. Do you see this street? I could claim that there are never any cars on this street because I have taken a picture when there are no cars on the street. Does that mean that there are never any cars on the street? No, of course not. Don't be silly. So, just because the mountain pokes through the top of the clouds in this picture does not mean the mountain always pokes through the clouds. These pictures show a mountain that is not poking through the clouds. So no, the mountain is not poking through the clouds, so all that argument pertaining to that is null and void. That's one straw man. Now, here is another one. You're assuming that the shadow is going upward. 
No, we're not assuming the shadow is going upward. This is another straw man created by Mr. Peabrain so that he could talk about his favourite subject, Flerspective. But no, it wasn't stated that this shadow was going upwards. Let's listen to Bob's own words. Now most people that would look at this photograph would realise that in order for the mountain to cast that shadow on the clouds above it, the sun had to be coming from an angle or an altitude lower than the peak of the mountain. Now, I didn't hear him say the shadow was going upwards, did you? <laughs> P-Brain also confuses shadows with light beams, and he loves his cartoons which don't necessarily match reality. And yes, P-Brain, your silly little cartoon is still silly, because it has nothing to do with the shadow being cast onto a level flat surface from below. On the left, you see a shadow being cast by the sun onto the underneath of the clouds. On the right is a cartoon of a light beam or light ray that you can see because the light reflects off the particles in the air. On the left is a shadow on the surface. On the right is a light beam. Anything you say about the path of the light beam is not relevant to the situation of a shadow being cast. Now brace yourselves because this is going to wreck your little claim that this shadow is going up. You are completely missing the boat because you make fun of perspective and you don't understand perspective. You, you, you're going to be proven wrong right now, okay? Yes, you're going to be proven wrong. And how many times do we have to tell you? There was never any claim that the shadow was going up. And it's all spoken with such arrogance and confidence, even though it's complete bollocks. Is that you don't understand perspective, even though you claim to. Now, I know you guys make fun of it and call it perspective, And the only reason you call it that is because you don't understand it. You've never learned it. You understand, right, that those clouds are not actually angled up. Yes, yes. We understand perfectly that those clouds are not actually angled up. There was something you made up, not something Bob brought up. It boggles the mind as to how you come to that. Oh, and we do understand perspective. And yes, we definitely don't understand perspective, and we will continue to make fun of it because it's just something you flatties make up to suit your narrative. Well, we're all done with that straw man now. Let's talk about perspective. P-Brain thinks the math is wrong because we draw orthogonal views Instead, we should be drawing perspective lines. Well, because the orthogonal views sort of wreck the flat earth, so we have to come up with something, don't we? What's wrong with this picture is that they are attempting to calculate visual angles to the sun from a non-visual, non-perspective drawing. So the drawing is not taking the visual perspective of the observer into account, and that's what's wrong with this diagram. Well, you couldn't be more wrong there, P-Brain. Notice how easy it is for a silly claim to be made, and yet there is no evidence. He just keeps filling the dog bowls with perspective flavoured Kool-Aid, and all the flat earth puppies lap it up without realising it's just poison for the mind. It's nothing but some geometry. I mean, they're showing us some angles, but it has nothing to do with perspective. Well, it has everything to do with perspective. Here's a perspective view of a fence taken by Miles Davis. Here it is again at a lower eye level. All is normal, lines converging at eye level and all that, and no, we don't expect this one to look curved. And here's an orthogonal drawing of the fence. And here's a photo taken side on with the overlaid drawing. Same fence. Looks different in perspective view, but it's the same fence. The fence doesn't change just because we change the camera position. The spatial relationships are not altered. In the Flatty's concept of perspective, the distances and angles magically alter themselves when you change the camera angle. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever it takes to keep the flat earth delusion alive, I suppose. 
Now I'm going to prove to you that orthogonal view and perspective are equivalent. I'm not going to do this by just talking about it, but by taking some measurements. A radical idea, that's a completely foreign concept to floodies. They like to do things by rhetoric, semantics, hand-waving and cartoons. So here's a battery that is five centimetres tall to the tip. <coughs> I've stood six of them on the floor 17.5 centimetres apart. But here's the orthogonal view and here's the perspective view. I've measured the angular size of the first one and the last one from the picture in pixels. It's slightly inaccurate but it's going to be close. Now your camera can be used as a measuring instrument if you know how. The field of view of the camera can be calculated and then we can work out the angular size in degrees of those two batteries. After looking at the next slide I challenge any flatty to tell me how far away a battery would need to be in order to appear to be 32 pixels high. All the working is here and we get a result of 2.106 degrees for the first and 1.316 degrees for the last and using those angular sizes we can calculate the distance between them and then we calculate that to be 81.7 centimeters which is very close to the 82.5 in reality so you see the perspective view matches reality you can measure it now we use the orthogonal view to calculate the angular sizes we get 2.106 degrees which matches exactly and 1.311 degrees which is 0 0.005 degrees away from what we measured that's pretty close so these match very well with reality within the measurement error of trying to count pixels on a photo so you see the math is not wrong the orthogonal view matches reality and in particular matches the perspective view the orthogonal view includes the perspective if we turn this view upside down this is exactly like the Sun getting further away yes the distance from the Sun to the ground will appear to get smaller but here is the kicker for you flat earthers the one thing that you never ever do because you don't want to or you suffer from dyscalculia if you scale this picture up and instead of five centimeters high that battery is 3,000 miles high then in order for this battery to be 2.1 degrees from the ground it would need to be 80,000 miles away how far away is that flood earth sun again time for more straw men come on out to Lake Pontchartrain where we boast the most curvature of anywhere on earth yeah that's right yeah right that's just visual compression caused by foreshortening at high zoom I could do the math but you wouldn't understand it one thing I do notice though is that you can see that it is curved and we built a line of luxury hotels that are following the curvature of the earth as shown in these photos that demonstrate that Lake Pontchartrain has more curvature than anywhere in the world yes another straw man you just pasted those pictures in where you wanted them notice the tower in the background see how it's not tilted like your imaginary hotels cartoons oh my goodness again I could do the maths but you wouldn't understand this is what perspective looks like on a flat plane right so if these pylons were on a flat plane wouldn't they follow the perspective lines you know they didn't make all those pylons shorter just for you pea brain what don't tell me you can't see the curve there maybe you just can't understand perspective no it doesn't Bob the actual location of the Sun does not need to be lower to cast that shadow the apparent position can be lower and cast that shadow from your perspective well finally we get to the crux of the matter and the question has always been and you can ignore all that other nonsense can the Sun that is higher than the clouds make a shadow underneath the clouds 
So P Brain shows this photo of a shadow being cast from a light source that is higher. But you know, I think he cheated and tilted the clouds up so that they are not level. All that talk of clouds sloping upwards. I thought you said the clouds were supposed to be level? This photo is dodgy as anything. Notice the shadow on the wall shows the light behind the bar. The shadows on the mock cloud also seem to confirm this. The only way to do this particular photo, I think, is to cheat somehow. This particular flat earther called Talk the Line tried the same thing, but ended up admitting this didn't work and debunked himself. He had a level mirror, and he could not see the street lights in it. He said sorry, he was wrong. Now I did this myself as well. Notice that due to perspective the light appears lower than the stool and the light is not actually lower than the stool. Yeah we got that and now we'll see how the shadow can be cast on the bottom of the front stool. The light's still on top of the stool bring it to the front down 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 oh there's the shadow oh up 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 oh it's just gone oh why is it gone the light appears to be lower oh oh it is lower now but the shadow only comes when it's actually lower not when it appears lower funny about that <coughs> One last thing. A lot of the ball earth believers, the advocates, that the shills that frequent our channels show stuff like this with the red water level. And they say, look, the horizon, it does drop. It doesn't rise to eye level. But we know that there's atmospheric masking. Like when you look at this red boat, right? It's a big red ship, actually. But as it goes out to sea, it starts to disintegrate. Right. Atmospheric masking, huh? Yeah, well, well, how come I can see the sun between the horizon and eye level in this photo? Uh, look, oh look, the horizon doesn't rise to eye level. And there's the proof. Funny about that. <coughs>Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Critical Think does a fantastic analytical job on his channel. Critical Think is the one that actually went to Phuket, Thailand, and put the water level up from that same overwatch that Phuket Word used to claim that the horizon rose to eye level and conclusively demonstrated the horizon was below the eye level. He's got an awful lot of really good videos on his channel and fewer than 2,000 subscribers. I think this is a good time for Team Bob to mobilize. So, one other thing that I want to add too is that there are a number of issues that were raised in uh, P-Brain's last video and some from some other flat earthers that actually have some merit that I'd like to address. I may do a second video today. Now, normally I don't do two videos released in the same day, but I've been kind of lax getting this studio together. and. I owe you a couple of them. So folks, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope that you appreciated this. Before you go, hit that little like and subscribe button down there. I'd really appreciate you following along. So we'll see you again soon. And remember, tomorrow we have our relative density experiment.